Howdy y'all. Welcome back to the Black Sheep Meadow. We're gonna do a little impromptu video today. Um, you know, we're, we're just outside 100 days uh, from our first frost date. Uh, for your areas, I can recommend you go to the, I believe it's a USDA website, but there's several different uh, places online you can find your, your first frost date for your growing zone, your plant hardiness maps, so on. Uh, we're going to go check out our compost. We did a video on uh, last week. We should still have some high temperatures. We got some corn planted this week. We're going to talk about this in a second. little experiment that I'm working on. Oh, let's see. Yeah, so we did these compost piles. This compost pile is my biggest one that I'm working on right now. Let's see if I can't get you guys flipped around. Hold on. All right, we got y'all flipped around there. All right, so we're gonna take a look at this palm. And we are about, it's hard to see that, 100 and, let's see if the camera gets it, 130 degrees, a little less than 130 maybe. Uh, so this pile is still, she's still cooking on the inside. Uh, we still got, it's a quite a large pile. It's probably 10, 12 foot in diameter and about four and a half foot tall, so. She's still cooking. Let's look at this is the pile that we started for y'all on the compost part one video. This is, uh, you can see this pile has fallen off in temperature drastically. We're at about 115, 116 degrees. Um, the reasons for this is the moisture content of this pile, being that it's a lot smaller, doesn't hold the moisture or the oxygen in the middle like the larger pile does so uh, it's, it's okay though this everything starts off small you get bigger with it so we're going to keep adding on this for the rest of the year let's go look at our, our corn that we planted all right so this is our main garden and uh you can still see we got some okra still trying to hang in there our uh trestles are uh our uh, tunnels for the green beans and the cucumbers, they, they, they fell off real early on due to the heat. Uh, but we have, for the fall, we got right, just over about 100 days to our first frost date, or at least our predicted first frost date. So we have, uh, we've got to get our fall crops in the ground. And I planted 17 150 foot rows of corn here. And actually hardly any if none of this corn may even make it for our own personal consumption this is all going to be or at least projected to be animal feed uh, due to rising feed costs we'll get to that on another uh, video as well but due to rising feed cost uh, we're trying to grow a lot of our own animal feed uh, we've got 26 chickens in the back projected to possibly have a few hogs here on the homestead before uh, winter so I'm doing a little experiment. There's, I think 12 of these 150 foot rows are an Indian ornamental corn. And then I've planted three of the, it's just a regular field dent corn. And then I've got another two rows of a shades of blue popcorn. Um, but I wanted to do an additional experiment on top of this. So this is all row crop. Uh, traditional farmers have done row crops like this for years. Uh, the idea behind it is the machinery can get in and harvest vast acreage of it. Uh, the rows hold moisture for the plant uh, during extended drought periods, um, which really does, it's not an issue for us because we have uh, the option for irrigation and we're just on such a small scale. I'm not bringing a harvester out here to, to harvest corn. We're gonna hand pick everything. So, but I did a little experiment. Corn is one of those things that it's wind pollinated. So uh, basically the pollination falls off the top of the plant onto the silks of the ear. And each one of the silks of the ear goes to a kernel on that cob. So I thought, hey, I've got this flat area. We uh, actually, I grew Milo here this spring. Um, but I got this flat area and I said, well, you know, we're just going to scatter corn, lightly rake it in uh, the, the corn seed and we're going to see how we produce. 
being that it's not in rows, nothing's going to be uniform. I'm curious to see how the pollination. All right, so sorry about the little skip in the video there. The camera actually overheated. So, uh, anyways, I'm I'm really looking to see how this patch of corn pollinates, being that it's not going to be in a uniform row. It's just scattered and lightly raked in. Uh, we'll see in the next 90 to 100 days, 110 days. So we got Bradley's trailer rental business there. If y'all are in Central Texas and need to rent a trailer, go ahead and give him a shot. Let's go see how uh, Amber has her. She's actually got a couple of seeds that she started last week. And she's out here doing a few more. She's starting them indoors, you know, to keep them out of the heat. And uh, we got a very narrow window uh, for some of these crops to get them before our first frost. So, what you got going on over here, Amber? Hey, guys. Um, I'm really excited. The seeds that I started last week are actually, Check I started them, them on Saturday. And that's what I've got already so far. So, two flats of uh, early round Dutch cabbage and one of winter thyme. I wanted to see how that goes. I haven't had a so, lot of luck with So, time. these seeds, uh, they've only been planted, what, four or five days now, right? Yes. So, I planted I mean, those that's Saturday. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, those, those, all of those, all three of those were planted Saturday. I couldn't wait when I was making my seed starter, uh, seed starting mix. So, I just went ahead and threw some in there. Uh, today, I'm going to start another uh, Copenhagen market cabbage, mm -hmm. and I'm going to start some broccoli. Um, and then I'm going through the rest of our seeds to find out what we need to do for our winter fall garden. What yeah, we want mainly, to plant. Mainly focusing on days to maturity, correct? Yes, days to maturity, um, what, where it's going to go, yeah. what time it needs to go on the ground, mm -hmm. when it's going to be ready to harvest. Those all things are very important. Um, and I kind of got a little... Awesome. Posh, posh of stuff going on. Well, if y'all are planning on a fall garden, you know, y'all need to get a, like I said, go, go see the USDA, the zones, the plant hardiness maps, uh, figure out your particular plants that you're going to plant and how many days to harvest. Uh, our, our main goal is to see how much food we can actually produce for ourselves. Everyone's going to have a different goal there, but uh, let's, uh, if we're going to do a fall garden, time to get after it. All right, guys, uh, we want to thank y'all for joining us on this video for this uh, for the midweek. Uh, if y'all got any questions, leave them down in the comments. Please give us a like, give us a subscribe and uh, stay tuned. We got a video for next week. We almost lost a homestead in a natural disaster this week. We'll stay tuned for that. See y'all later. <laughs>